G'day guys, it is Ben here from Hunt the Night and what we're going to do today is go through the menu system of the infrared finders. Now, we are using the FH25R today because it has um, two additional menu items that the FL25R does not have, that being the ultra clear mode and also the ability to change from a warm to a cool palette and vice versa. So we are going to go through them. Um, just like all the Rico devices as well, um, this has two levels of uh, menu. So we have our quick menu. So if we quickly press the M button on our device, it'll bring up the first menu. And in here, using the up button on our uh, device, we can change the zoom and you'll see that that's reflected in the top left hand corner and we can also change the color palette and as you'll see the icon also changes in the top left hand corner next to that little icon and the zoom in the top left hand corner it tells me i'm on man manual shutter refresh mode and obviously off to the right is my battery indicator and down the bottom we have our date and time. A little cool feature with the date and time side of things is you can actually synchronize the date and time using um, the app. Now, when we're in this short menu, we've gone through the zoom and color palettes. When we press the menu button one more time, we've got our screen brightness up the top and it might throw a few things out. So we'll just go through that quickly and our image sharpness down the bottom. Again, adjusting these with either the laser rangefinder button or the photo button, which we'll call up and down. Uh, pressing the M will get us out of there. Holding the menu button for a longer period of time will give us a few different options in the long menu. So the first one here, we have our enhanced image mode. Uh, let's turn that on by pressing M quickly. Uh, then we've got uh, Wi-Fi on or off. Uh, video recording and uh, then we can also input on picture and picture mode if we want to uh, we can turn on our compass and we can turn on our windage elevation our pitch and so on um, that we have you know there as well uh, then we can put turn on whether we want the device into sleep mode or not uh, here we get to select whether we want to have an auto refresh mode or manual refresh mode and this allows us to change our palette from cool to warm, which is just a different color option. Uh, I've shown that in a couple of different videos as well. Um, I will do a video just on color palettes. Uh, coming down to the next page, we go down to this and press the menu once, menu button. Um, we've then got our pixel correction, where we can fix dead uh, pixels. And uh, we've got our calibration, uh, for our, um, uh, for our compass. Uh, here we can set the date time, but I prefer to do it uh, via the app rather than having to press all these buttons and change all those things. Um, doing it by the app is pretty cool. Yeah, get out of there. Uh, the information on the device, which will just tell us what it is and firmware and serial number and things like that. And then we can do a factory reset down the bottom, which we're not going to do. So that's really it from a menu function type of thing. Um, what I do want to do, if you read the manual, there's a, there's a section in there about how to actually change the range finder in, in terms of where it activates and where it, where it aims in terms of zeroing it. Uh, they took the functionality out uh, for a very good reason. This range finder in here is like, you know, like a lot of range finders. Um, it needs certain criteria of, of your objective to be met in order for it to work. Now, what I mean by that is what you really want is a dark, flat, facing 90 degrees towards you type of target. Okay, you can use a tree if you hit the middle, but using things that are uh, highly reflective um, or things that are at an angle to you aren't really going to work because what happens in terms of how this works is when you laser range find something it sends out a beam and that beam is a, is a pulsating piece of light okay and the computer inside is looking for that piece of light and when it comes back 
it, the computer is measuring the frequency and, and, and the time that it's taken to basically bounce off it and, and come back. Um, if it's going to go off at obscure angles, it's not going to come back and you're going to get really strange results. So you aren't going to be able to range a fox at 300 metres. But you can range a tree at 300 metres. You can range things in the, in the area that you're shooting in to give you an idea of you know, what it is that's, you know, that's out there and, and, and those kind of distances where, where you expect your prey to come. Um, you know, you, you have success ranging, you know, something like a, you know, like a cow, um, you know, closer range. But, you know, when you start to look for smaller targets and range find them and expect to, you're probably not going to be able to. So they took the functionality out to re-zero because people are actually making it a lot worse because uh, of the angle deviation that it was um, sending off on. So in the manual, ignore that section. And when you're trying to range, range off things that are 90 degrees to you, um, solid, preferably dark, and you'll, you'll have a lot more success with the actual rangefinder. All right, guys, that's it. If you've got any more questions about these, uh, let me know. They are available and ready to ship at our website at huntthenight.com.au. And, uh, yeah, feel free to like, uh, subscribe, throw some comments on, and, um, yeah, I'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks, guys.